This channel was built on a love of Star Wars The Clone Wars, and we'd bet that a lot of you, especially those who've been around for a while, are also big fans of the show. The Clone Wars gave us some of Star Wars' most beloved characters, many of whose stories have gone on to play a defining role in later Star Wars media. One of the most beloved of these original characters is Captain Rex, one of the most prominent clone characters in the show. Rex is at once representative of the Republic's clone troopers and a subversion of everything we thought we knew about the Grand Army of the Republic, and his character's journey sheds a lot of light on the contradictions that define all clones. In this video, we'll be analysing Rex's arc from the Clone Wars and unpacking the message it's meant to teach. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Star Wars The Clone Wars had a bit of a rocky start. Based on our viewership demographics, many of you are probably too young to remember, but when the show began, it was pretty widely panned and a big chunk of Star Wars fans dismissed it straight out of the gate. A big part of this was the fact that the movie that kicked things off, well, let's not mince words, it kinda sucked. And while the first season was a huge step up, it was clear that the concept for the show hadn't quite solidified yet. A lot of fans dismissed The Clone Wars as just a kid's show, with nothing valuable for adult viewers. But there were others who took issue with parts of the show's concept. Before the show even began, part of Lucasfilm's pitch for it was that part of the show would focus exclusively on the clones, and there were a number of people who thought that was an uninteresting concept. After all, aren't clones fundamentally all just copies of the same person? How can you write an interesting series? just an interesting episode even, just with that. Part of this disinterest was fueled by how the clones had been depicted up to that point. There had been expanded universe stories with clone characters that were dynamic and interesting. The Republic comics had Alpha 17, the novel The Cestus Deception had Jango Tats, and Star Wars Republic Commando, both the game and the novels, had a whole slew of interesting clone characters. But exposure to those characters was limited to fans who read Star Wars novels, and the more mainstream pieces of Star Wars media didn't really have dynamic clone characters. Sure, Revenge of the Sith and the Star Wars The Clone Wars micro series had named clones, but none of them were really characters per se. They didn't have much personality, they certainly didn't have character arcs, and they generally lacked motivation beyond their orders. For the most part, most clone characters were written like this before The Clone Wars. They weren't even characters, they were set pieces. Even the sources that had dynamic clone characters tended to treat those characters as exceptions, with most clones remaining faceless NPCs. Then, the Clone Wars happened. As we've already said, the Clone Wars movie was widely panned and for good reason, but a few viewers noticed that it had done something interesting. The film wasn't focused on the clone characters, but it still portrayed them as something more than set pieces. They all have personality, even the nameless, faceless ones, and even more interestingly, not all of them are faceless. In prior Clone Wars media, even the ones that had dynamic clone characters, the clones rarely removed their helmets, and yet they do so multiple times over the course of the film. What's more, some clones are subtly differentiated. They wear their hair differently, they have slightly different personalities. It's subtle, but it's there and it was different from the standardised, living droid version of the rank-and-file clones that we'd seen before. And no character underscored this more than Captain Rex. Rex was introduced in the film as one of the members of the main cast, and he made an immediate impression as the clone with the most personality. He was an actual character, and he was also distinctly cool, so he caught the eye of many young fans. As the series proper began, more clone characters were introduced, but Rex always remained one of the most visible and most beloved. He was also the clone character with by far the most developed arc. Most of the clones in the show didn't have arcs. The likes of Commander Cody and Commander Wolf, while memorable and full of personality, are stagnant and don't evolve in any meaningful way. Some other clones have small arcs that are limited to individual stories, but only a few have full, series-spanning arcs, and of them, Rex is by far the most complete. But the most interesting thing about Rex wasn't that he was a dynamic clone character. That had been done before, after all. 
it's that he was representative of how the series was treating all the clones. The very first episode of the series, Ambush, underscores this with a brief scene in which Yoda discusses the individuality and unique perspectives of the three clones he's fighting alongside. But it's Rookies, the show's fifth episode, that really established how the show was going to deal with the clones. That was the first of the series' promised clone-centric episodes, and it was far and away the best episode the show had seen up to that point. Hell, many people would even say that it remained the best episode for well over two seasons. The Clone Wars had made the clones individual enough to carry an episode on their own while still keeping them as clones, and it was the start of one of the show's main narrative threads, its exploration of the unique conditions, personalities, and contradictions of the Republic's clone troopers. There's an argument to be made that that was the best part of the Clone Wars' story. It resonated with enough people that there's still a sizable contingent of Star Wars fans that love all things clone-related and are always eager for even the most minuscule details of their existence. We should know, we started out catering to that after all. Even if you're not in that camp though, the story of the clones is still powerful and throughout the Clone Wars, it's told through the experiences of Captain Rex. The Clone Wars doesn't have an actual main character. The show is about the Clone Wars and the different ways in which they shape, and are in turn shaped by, the people forced to fight in them. The war itself is the main character, if you will, and the different arcs of its major recurring characters come together to tell the stories about the conflict. But some character arcs are more noteworthy than others, of course. Perhaps the character arc that the show gives the most focus is Ahsoka's, but Rex's arc is a close second. That's because, like for all of the show's other characters, Rex's arc isn't just his personal journey, but a personalized exploration of one of the show's major themes. In this case, the nature of the clones and their relationship with the war. Now, Captain Rex may have been one of the Clone Wars' standout characters, but he was actually a late minute addition to the cast. Originally, his role was supposed to be filled by Alpha from the Republic comics, who, like fellow comics character Asajj Ventress, was meant to be brought into the show as a nod to the expanded universe, and because the writers liked his character. But George Lucas instructed the writers to instead come up with a new clone character to serve under Anakin, because, and yes, this is the actual reason, the show already had too many main characters whose names started with an A. Nonetheless, you can see how the writers worked some elements of Alpha into Rex, and Alpha was clearly the starting point from which they established his character. Some of the similarities are superficial. Both clones wore armor with blue stripes and nearly identical modifications, and the only aesthetic differences between their two kits are that Rex has J guys on his helmet and uses a slightly darker shade of blue. But their personalities are clearly cast from the same mold. You might call Rex a kid-friendly version of Alpha. He's not as cynical nor as gung-ho about committing war crimes, but is still independent for a clone, not afraid to talk back or speak his mind, and he's got a loose relationship with the rules. The similarities are especially evident in the film, with Rex's experience outranks everything attitude and how he resists Ventress on Teth, which bears similarity to how Alpha resists Ventress on Rat Attack in Star Wars Republic. But the writers of the Clone Wars were still intent on making Rex his own character, and not only by ditching Alpha's edginess. They made Rex more empathetic and inquisitive, not to the point of being an ineffective military leader, but enough to allow him to, for example, act as a mentor to the clones of Domino Squad and Rookies. With the handful of exceptions, he ditches Alpha's shoot first and ask questions later attitude with a much greater respect for sentient life. Rex also has a sense of justice beyond his job description, and though he's more of a following orders type than Alpha was, he still thinks outside the box and proves willing to question his orders. Perhaps the most important difference between Rex and Alpha though, is that Rex is just an ordinary clone. Alpha was an ARC Trooper, the first ARC Trooper audiences were introduced to in fact. He acted like it too. He was written as an elite commando and individual badass. But while Rex is certainly cool, he's just a regular officer and is not nearly as flashy as Alpha. This difference not only makes Rex less over the top, but it also gives him a better perspective for what his arc is meant to explore. Rather than looking down on the regs, he's one of them, and he understands their experiences as a result. 
At the start of the series, Captain Rex is an independent thinker, but a loyal soldier nonetheless, someone with keen senses of justice and individuality. He's more curious and less likely to accept things at face value than other clones, and is also unorthodox, willing to bend the rules and consider outside the box strategies. In summary, he's a pretty fitting counterpart for Anakin Skywalker, and he, Anakin and Ahsoka have a nice team dynamic. At the start of the show though, Rex is a bit undeveloped as a character. This is because at this stage in the story, Rex hasn't been fully defined yet. In the early episodes of the first season, his arc hasn't really begun, and as a result, who Rex is hasn't totally been set in stone. That changes later in the season with the episode The Hidden Enemy. The Hidden Enemy is a prequel, taking place before the events of the Clone Wars film, but it works for Rex's character when watching in release order all the same, as its impact on Rex outside of the episode itself doesn't really become all that apparent until season 2 anyway. Call it a writing issue, or call it Rex needing time to process, either way, the start of Rex's arc is a slow burn. Anyway, the hidden enemy introduces an entirely new kind of clone character to this series, a traitor. This is a much more extreme manifestation of individuality that the Clone Wars had shown us for the clones up to that point. Sure, the clones had shown thus far that they had different mannerisms, hairstyles and personalities, but they had all still been unquestioningly loyal soldiers of the Republic, as they were created to be. In Sergeant Slick, the hidden enemy presents a clone that's not just an individual in his own right, but one that rejects the very reason he was created. And Slick isn't just opposed to fighting for the Republic, he actually sides with the Separatists. This not only changes everything the audience thinks they know about the clones, but it also challenges how Rex thinks about himself and his fellow clones. Throughout the episode, he has to grapple with the idea that one of his brothers could be a traitor, but once he learns Slick's motivations at the end, it raises new questions for him. Slick reveals at the end of the episode that he betrayed the Republic because he sees himself and his fellow clones as slaves, forced to fight and die for a cause they have no stake in. He also claims to have funneled the Sarge Ventress tactical information not because of money, but because she offered him a chance to be free of eternal servitude in the Grand Army of the Republic. Rex counters Slick's professed motives by saying that if he really cared about his fellow clones, he wouldn't have put them at risk by helping Ventress. But this is a load of crap, and Rex knows it. Slick wasn't putting the clones in any more danger than they were already in by being forced to wage war on Christosis in the first place. The conditions of the clones meant that they were bound to die by the droves no matter what. Slick simply hoped that a Republic defeat in the Clone Wars would allow those who survived to be free. Slick, as we've discussed in the past, did nothing wrong, and everything he says about the conditions of the clones is entirely true. Rex avoids confronting this. His only answer to Slick is a fairly limp gotcha, and it seems more like something he wants to believe than something he actually believes. He doesn't want to even consider that Slick might have a point, so he looks to undermine Slick as a person instead of addressing his views on the Grand Army. Rex's counter to Slick, that he clearly doesn't actually care about the clone's welfare, doesn't even respond to Slick's accusations. It's just basic ad hominem, an excuse Rex is giving himself not to listen to anything Slick says, because as much as he doesn't want to consider it, Rex has no response to Slick's views. Either Rex is able to get himself to write Slick off, or he doesn't let his doubts show until midway through the show's second season, when he encounters another renegade clone. In the episode The Deserter, Rex, after being injured during a skirmish on Seleucamai's backcountry, is dropped off at a farm to recuperate while the rest of his unit chases General Grievous halfway across the planet. But the farm turns out to be the home of a clone deserter, forcing Rex to consider those unpleasant questions once again. One renegade clone is an anomaly, two is a pattern. Rex could probably write off Sleek as a fluke, but the existence of Cut Laquain rips that excuse away. What's more, unlike Slick, Cut isn't a traitor, just a deserter. Rex's earlier excuse about how Slick put his brothers at risk doesn't work here. Cut never endangered anyone, especially since he established that he only ran after his entire unit was wiped out. Rex's first instinct is to jump to a new excuse, labeling Cut a coward for his desertion, but he finds it hard to believe the more time he spends with Cut. 
Rex could brush off Slick because he was the enemy, but Cut's just an ordinary guy. He's got a family and lives an honest life, and as much as he doesn't want to, Rex can't help but like him. Yet, Cut raises the same issues Slick did. He wanted a life beyond being a slave soldier for the Republic, and he didn't want to die for a cause he had no stake in, for a government that didn't even treat him as a human being. Once more, everything Cut says is reasonable, and the only way Rex can really shield himself from that is by trying to see Cut as a deserter first and foremost. But then Cut's farm gets attacked by commando droids. In the battle that ensues, Cut proves pretty clearly that he's no coward. As Rex is wounded, Cut chooses to be the first line of defense, putting himself at risk to protect Rex and his family. He fights every bit as hard as Rex, and even saves Rex's life at one point. In the wake of this skirmish, Rex is left with no choice but to see Cut Laquane for who he really is. A good and honorable man, neither a coward nor a traitor. And this leaves Rex with no excuse to avoid considering Cut's reason for deserting the GAR. At the end of the episode, Rex makes an interesting choice. He isn't ready to accept that Cut was right, at least not yet. He returns to the Grand Army of the Republic and continues the fight. But unlike with Slick, who Rex apprehended and turned over to the Jedi, he resolves to keep Cut's secret and let him remain a free man. This is a turning point for Rex, not only because he's defying Republic law here, but because he's on some level accepting that Cut was right, or at least that Cut hadn't done anything wrong. By the end of The Deserter, Rex has rejected the idea that fighting in the GAR was the right and natural thing for any clone to do, and even if he's not yet willing to turn away from the fight himself, he understands that it's a reasonable choice to make, even for a clone. Rex believed that Cut had earned his right to be free, and in that, he made a vital step toward accepting that he and the rest of the clones weren't free. Rex keeps to the background for the rest of Season 2 and most of Season 3, and his character arc is left dormant for some time. But as the Clone Wars goes on, Rex watches more and more of his brothers die, and the war worsens for all involved. He ends up fighting on Kamino itself, the very homeworld of the GAR, where 99 and many, many other clones are killed during the defense of Topoka City. He experiences the horror of the Citadel, helpless to prevent the apparent death of Echo and many other clones at the hands of the prison's guards. These losses reinforce Rex's growing doubts and cynicism, and as the series gets darker, Rex does as well. And then, the Umbara arc happens. The episodes Darkness on Umbara, The General, Plan of Descent, and Carnage of Krell are some of Star Wars The Clone Wars' best, and they're another major stepping stone for Rex's character arc. A whole bundle of stepping stones, really. The Umbara arc is one of the most brutal battles of The Clone Wars, and throughout it, Rex has to watch his friends die in a brutal slog for control of someone else's planet once again. But the cruelty of the Battle of Umbara is worsened by General Krell, who brought into command the 501st Legion after Anakin Skywalker is suddenly recalled to Coruscant. And Krell, to put it as nicely as possible, is a massive prick. Krell sucks in two specific ways, however, and they once more put Captain Rex on the spot. The first is immediately made apparent. He hates clones, doesn't see them as human beings, and does everything in his power to make sure they know it. Krell dehumanizes his men at every turn, treating them like battle droids and refusing to use their chosen name, instead calling them by the identification numbers the Kaminoans assigned them at birth. The interesting thing about this, though, is that if Krell's every word wasn't dripping with the most obvious spite you've ever seen, this wouldn't entirely be out of place with a lot of Clone Wars era stories. But because Star Wars The Clone Wars has put a lot of effort into emphasizing the humanity of the clones, this dehumanization really stands out, and by this point in the series, Rex and the clones have learned to see it for what it really is. What's more, Krell is a terrible tactician. His strategies are basic and incur heavy casualties at every turn, something Krell clearly doesn't care about at all. He uses his men like cannon fodder, sending them to die meaningless deaths that could have easily been avoided with a bit more creative thinking. Krell also flatly refuses to accept the slightest shred of tactical advice from his men, even when they clearly have a better grasp on tactics. It's egregious and infuriating, but in a way, it's also a microcosm of the Clone Wars as a whole. Krell wasn't the only one needlessly sending his men off to die. 
the whole battle of Umbara was unnecessary, justified solely by control of trade routes. The same applies to the Clone Wars as a whole. Krell was just more blatant about what he was doing. All the Brothers Rex had lost up to that point had died deaths that were just as pointless and unnecessary as the ones Krell was sending his men to. Krell's cruelty forces the issues Rex has been grappling with since Slick came into focus. Krell is blatant about the fact that the clones are slaves of the Republic, living droids made to die for nothing, and the casualties he causes underscore the pointlessness of the Clone Wars as a whole. The men of the 501st quickly learned to hate Krell in the Umbara arc, and at many points, some of the more individualistic clones support defying his orders. But for most of the arc, Rex is on the fence, despite being one of the most independent clone characters in the series. That's because Rex, unlike the others, has the perspective to see the larger context that Krell's a part of. He understands in a way that none of the other clones do that Krell isn't just a one-off, his proof of everything Slick and Cut had said. Rex hesitates to move against Krell because he knows that doing so would be fully accepting that they had been right, that the clones really are just slaves, and that their fight is neither noble nor worthwhile, just a meaningless slaughter. As part of Rex's hesitation, as well as his hesitation all throughout his character arc, is the idea of loyalty. Loyalty is a big theme in the Clone Wars, and betrayal is the show's ultimate sin, worse than anything else. Loyalty is also why Rex is so hesitant to confront the truth of his and his brother's existence, because he's been told all his life that defying orders and turning away from the Grand Army is betrayal, and Rex doesn't want to be a traitor. But Fives, Jesse, and Hardcase decide to defy orders and do what they think is tactically necessary anyway. The real betrayal, they believe, would be following Krell's orders and allowing their brothers to die for nothing. Their plan works better than any of Krell's had up to that point, but instead of being pleased with the outcome, Krell is furious over their defiance, and he orders the surviving clones, Fives and Jesse, to be executed. But the execution doesn't go as planned. This is wrong, and we all know it. The general is making a mistake, and he needs to be called on it. No clone should have to go out this way. We are loyal soldiers. We follow orders, but we are not a bunch of unthinking droids. We are men. We must be trusted to make the right decisions, especially when the orders we are given are wrong. Fire! What happened? This pushes Rex over the edge. He refuses to assign another squad to the execution, and he makes the crucial realization that loyalty and obedience are not the same thing. In response, Krell subjects the 501st to an even worse horror, deliberately engineering a brutal friendly fire incident. This pushes Rex even further, and he finally decides to mutiny against Krell's leadership. He rejects the command hierarchy of the GAR altogether, and he finally accepts that Krell's actions are abhorrent and have been from the beginning. In doing so, he accepts what Slick had told him many seasons before, that the way the clones are treated is wrong. This blow is softened by the reveal that Krell had fallen to the dark side and turned his back on the Republic, which allows Rex to mutiny while still remaining loyal to the Republic. But the broader implications of Krell's conduct are still there, hanging over Rex's head, and the mutiny on Umbara marks a turning point for his character arc. Krell is ultimately captured, and Rex then comes to his next challenge, whether or not to kill Krell for what is done. This is a different kind of dilemma from the ones Rex had encountered up to that point, because Krell didn't need to be executed. Killing him would have been an act of revenge and nothing more. Rex clearly wants to, and the audience wants him to as well, but he hesitates anyway. In the end, the choice is taken out of his hands as Dogma kills Krell for him. But Rex nonetheless didn't make that choice, which reinforces something very interesting about his character. Many other clones, among them Alpha 17, whom Rex was originally based on, would have taken that shot without hesitation. But Rex, even as his whole understanding of himself and his world is being challenged, still refuses to stoop that low. Rex leaves Umbara knowing that the Renegade clones had been right, 
that he and his brothers are slaves of the Republic, dehumanized and sent off to die for nothing. But he retains his loyalty to the Republic and to its cause in the Clone Wars. He accepts now that the condition of the clones is unjust, but he still doesn't see a way to change it and he still doesn't want to run. He still has a degree of faith in the Republic as a vague concept, but he's finally accepted the reality of the clones' situation. Two later story arcs, however, help to push Rex along even further, slowly eroding his faith in the Republic. This first comes at the end of Season 5, when Ahsoka Tano was framed for bombing the Jedi Temple. This frame-up was a convincing one, and the Republic was certain that she was guilty. But Rex wasn't. He and Anakin were pretty much the only ones who were never convinced of Ahsoka's guilt, and while Rex never directly assisted Ahsoka, he did order his men to go easy on her during the manhunt, ordering them to set their weapons to stun despite her apparently being a dangerous fugitive. Rex's gut feeling was validated at the end of the arc, and this meant the Republic had been wrong. But it's the next story arc that really shook Rex. The first four episodes of Season 6, The Unknown, Conspiracy, Fugitive, and Orders. Rex is really a side character in this arc. It's what he sees from the sidelines that shakes him so badly. This arc involves the trooper Tup prematurely executing Order 66, leading Fives to unravel the whole conspiracy to destroy the Jedi. But Fives is drugged and goaded into an attack on Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, and he's killed by Commander Fox before he can explain to Rex and Anakin exactly what it is that is discovered. Fives is the third and final renegade clone trooper to advance Rex's arc, and he makes the most impact out of any of them. This is because, unlike Slick and Cut, Fives was someone Rex had served with for years and respected wholeheartedly. Rex had no question of Fives' trustworthiness, honor, or integrity. Rex is more open to listening to Fives after he gets framed for attacking Palpatine in part because of this, in part because he knows that from Ahsoka's case that an accusation isn't the same as guilt, and because he knows from Cut that renegade clones can be worth hearing out, so he extends that courtesy to Fives. But Fives has been drugged by the time he's able to talk to Rex, and he can't properly communicate what he's learned. All he's able to get across is that he thinks there's a massive conspiracy targeted at the Jedi, one that involves inhibitor chips implanted in the heads of all the clones. It sounds like nonsense conspiracy theories, an impression strengthened by Fives' erratic behavior. Back at the start of the show, Rex probably would have brushed Fives off here as he had brushed off Slick way back on Christosis. But in this case, he knows better. It certainly helps that Rex knows full well that something was up. He saw Tup shoot General Tipler, and he could tell that he was acting weird, like he wasn't in complete control of his actions. Rex was smart enough, and had enough of a healthy distrust of authority by this point to tell that something was up, and he wasn't satisfied by the Kaminoan's official explanation, which was that both Tup and Fives had been affected by a brain parasite they'd contracted from the drinking water on Ringo Vinda. As the final episodes of the series reveal, he ended up looking into the matter on his own, and in the process, he discovered that the inhibitor chips, at least, were real. Rex didn't end up surgically removing his own chip, as Fives had, but he knew that they were there and that there was something nefarious about them. It had become clear that the Republic, or someone high ranking within it, had ulterior motives. His faith in the Republic and his willingness to fight in the Clone Wars were being eroded, but he still didn't act. He kept fighting until the end of the Clone Wars, participating in the battles on Anaxis and Mandalore. It would take Order 66 for Rex's character arc to reach its inevitable endpoint. When Order 66 came through, and then Commander Rex was ordered to kill Ahsoka, he clearly didn't want to do so. <laughs> he had already seen Ahsoka falsely accused before, and he knew full well that the Jedi hadn't turned on the Republic, not unless something had gone seriously wrong with the Republic. But the inhibited chip left him no choice, and he opened fire on Ahsoka anyway. It was only when Ahsoka captured him and had a team of droids surgically remove the inhibitor chip that he was able to come to his senses. The last episode of Star Wars The Clone Wars, Victory and Death, marks the conclusion of the character arc the show had been building for Rex. His broader character arc continued in other shows, but within The Clone Wars' narrative, it had all been building up to a single choice Rex made in the finale, the epiphany that defined his whole arc. And that choice wasn't refusing to carry out Order 66. It was choosing to turn his back on the Republic. When he fails to convince Jesse to back down and is accused of treason against the Grand Army of the Republic, 
for protecting Ahsoka, he accepts it and he joins the fight against what had once been his men. Rex's character arc began with his confrontation of Slick and it ended with Rex following Slick's lead in not only abandoning the Grand Army of the Republic, but choosing to fight against it. Order 66 leads Rex to realize the painful truth of the Clone Wars, that it had all been for nothing and that the Republic had never deserved the loyalty of the clones. He and his brothers had been slaves of the Republic, unappreciated and used as pawns, and all their sacrifices had meant nothing. Rex accepted it all, and everything he'd slowly realized over the course of the war had finally pushed him to make a choice. He chose to be free. It was a choice that, ultimately, very few clones made. That was one of the many tragedies of the Clone Wars. The show made crystal clear that these were individual human beings but in the end, most of them refused to fully realize that, refused to break free and fight back. Those who did, like Rex, ended up having to turn on their own brothers, those who were irretrievably loyal to the government that had been their greatest enemy all along. Captain Rex was, at heart, a soldier, but he ultimately made the choice to be more than that. Over the course of Star Wars The Clone Wars, he chose to be more independent, more inquisitive, more creative and strategic and more willing to defy orders if the need arose. And in the end, alone among the men of the 501st Legion, he chose to be free. So that's our look at Rex's character arc in Star Wars The Clone Wars. But what do you think? Has this changed your perspective on Rex at all? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.